Today I'm going to show you how to run Blend the Clock Tower on Tabletop Simulator. If you're brand new to Tabletop Simulator, I recommend that you run the tutorial by clicking on this button. First we're going to click on the Create button. If we just want to test out the mod, we can click on the Single Player button, but if we want to play with other players, click on the Multiplayer button. Once we have the settings that we want for the server, just click on Create Server. The first thing that pops up is this Games tab. The third row shows us the workshop mods that we're subscribed to. And if we click on this button, it shows us the entire list of all of our currently subscribed workshop mods. Right now we don't have Blend the Clock Tower, so we're going to close this and open up our web browser and search for Blend the Clock Tower Cyanar and click on the first link. After you log on to Steam on the site, you just scroll down and click on the subscribe button. And now in game, it should appear in our workshop row. So just click on it and then click on load. And all of the storyteller tools are in the black zone here. So in order to switch seats, we click on our name on the top right, click on change color, and then click on the black circle in the middle, which puts us in the storyteller seat. And now we can see all of the objects. Some useful camera commands are Shift-1, which shows us a top-down view of the table, Shift-2, which shows us the storyteller tools, and Shift-3, which is used for the night helper tool. First, I'm going to go over the bags on the top row. First two bags are for fabled characters. If you want to look inside the bag, just right click on it and click on search. To take things out of the bag, just click and drag it out, out of the menu and onto the game. And if you want to put it back in the bag, just click and drag it back inside the menu like this. This third bag is for almanacs, rule books, and there's a new player guide in there too. In this bag, we have tools. The first tool is for edition voting, for players to vote on which edition they want to play. The second tool is for generating a town square for people who want to play outside, who want to generate a town square outside of the game. I won't be going over how to use it. This storyteller manual here contains helpful advice on how to set up a game and various commands that you can use to run the game. If you have any questions, I recommend that you look through this storyteller manual first because it's pretty comprehensive. On the right side here, we have our info tokens. Generally, we won't be using these, but they're there in case you want to use them for whatever reason. This Traveler Tokens bag is for um, adding travelers into the game. And these two bags here are for Shroud Tokens and Vote Tokens. But generally we don't have to touch these bags at all because it's all scripted. In the middle row here we have our Character Token bags. The first bag is for Townsfolk, Outsiders, Minions, Demons, Travelers, and Reminder Tokens. On the right here, we have our table controls. The first row is for setting the size of the table. Right now, we have 10 seats on the table. If we want to add another seat, we can click on this button. And that will add another seat to the game. And it goes up to 20. If we want to get rid of seats, we can click on this minus sign here. Shuffle seats will shuffle all of the players into different colors. The toggle light buttons will turn on and turn off the lights if you want some mood lighting. The delete background button will delete the entire background for you for people with bad computers. And finally, the reset table button will reset the game once you're done playing the game and you want to start a new game. So in order to set up a game, we use this character tool here. First, we set 
select which edition we want to play. And on the left side, we have our characters, which are the characters on the script. The characters in the selected column here are the characters that will be dealt into this deal bag once we're done. And in order to populate this column, we just click on characters from the use column, just like this. And if we want to change some characters, we can remove them by clicking on them in the selected column. If we want to randomize our setup, first we set how many players we have, and then we click on the random button here. If you want to prevent characters from being, if you want certain characters to be in the game, you can click on the unlock button to lock them in place. If we have a drunk in the game, then you need to remove it from the selected column and add in another townsfolk. And after we deal the roles, you add the drunk reminder token to, to one of the townsfolk. So once we're happy with our setup, we click on the start button. from these bags and put it into this deal bag. This auto bluff button will make it so that three townsfolk will be dealt out in the center here for demon bluffs. I generally keep this off, but it's up to you because I like to set my own bluffs. These auto tint buttons here will tint the character tokens for you to whatever color the players are sitting in. If we search this bag here, what I like to keep in mind is that the first character in the bag will be Delta White then the next character, the washerwoman, will be delta brown. So it goes clockwise, depending on the order of the bag. So if you want to change who gets what character, you can just move around the characters inside the bag before you deal it. So once we're ready, click on the deal button. And change the table size to eight, because we only have eight players. And once we're done setting up, we can start the game. Oh, I have to add a drunk token. Let's make the virgin the drunk. Okay, so we're ready now. So we're gonna go up here and click on clock mode until we see blindfold mode. And then click on blindfold all to blindfold all the players. So everyone is blindfolded now. So we go down here to our night helper tool. This night helper tool, what it does is it sends whispers to players um, if they wake up at night. This preview message down here is the message that they see when you send it to them. In order to send a message, you just click on the button at the top of the night order. So I just clicked on that and you can see in the chat that I've sent red and white their respective messages. Some characters you will need to fill in pumps, such as for the demon info. So to do that, you just fill in the input boxes down here. And you don't need to fill in the entire name because there's auto completion. Once the preview looks correct, just click on the button. And you can see in the chat that the daemon has gotten that message. And keep in mind when you wake up, when you click on the characters on the night order, it unblindfolds them automatically and blindfolds the previous player. If you want to turn off that feature, just click on this button. So once you're done with the night, you click on the unblindfold all button, which unblindfolds all of the players. 
When you want to start nominations, click on blindfold mode button and switch to clock mode and then click on show clock, which brings up the clock. Players can nominate by clicking on the become nominator button and nominate a player by clicking on the red button next to their name. In order to vote, they just have to click on the vote button in front of them. So once you're ready to start the clock, just click on the start clock button and the hand will start moving. And keep in mind, once the hand passes you, you can't change your vote anymore. So once you're done with the day, you can click on the hide clock button. And then in order to kill a player, you can just click on the living token in front of them. If you want to unkill someone, just click on the token again. In order to prevent them from showing up in the night order, you can just set them to dead on this side using these buttons. For example, if I kill the empath here, the empath will no longer show up in the night order. So once the day is done, I'm just going to go back to clock mode, switch to blindfold mode, and click on blindfold all to blindfold all the players, and begin the next night. If you want to add a character into the game, you can do it using this add character feature down here. For example, let's say I want to add a gunslinger to the game. The first thing I would do is increase the table size to add another seat. Then I'm going to give that player a traveler token. And then in the night helper tool, I can add the character using this feature. So just type in the character name and what color they're sitting in. And now they're in the game. If I want to replace a character, for example, let's say the imp kills himself and the minion becomes a demon, you just click on the you click on the X next to the character's name to remove them from the list. And then you add the character down here. So now white is the imp. And in order to fix the night order, you can just click on other nights to refresh the list. Once you're done playing the game, just click on reset table and everything will be placed back into their bags. If you want to play a custom game, just click on this custom game button down here and then click on save load list, which has a bunch of preloaded custom scripts for you to play with. And once you click on the load button, it will replace all the character sheets on the table. And setting up a game is the same as how you would set up a normal game. If you want to make your own custom list or import it into this thing, you can do so by adding characters using this feature down here and filling in the list like this. Or you can click on batch import and paste in or type in a list of characters. And again, you don't need to type in the entire thing. Okay, and then if you want to set a, an image for the character sheet, you can do so by inputting an image URL after you click on this load image button. So you type in the URL here or paste it in, click on load image, and now this character sheet will have the image of your custom script. So after you've done that, you, if you want to save it, click on Save Load List, and then save it to a new slot like this. And click on Save.
And then you have to save this character tool into your save, save chest. So right click on it, click on save object, and then click on save. So the next time you load the game, once you, once you load the game, you right click on this character tool, delete it, and then load in the one you have in your save chest. And then you go to custom games and your list should be here. And there you go. That's pretty much all I have for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and have fun.